Alright, there's some sort of a wiper mechanism or something here. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what this is, but but anyway, anyway, this this old machine has been pretty neglected, so I'm just going to start taking stuff apart. There's not a lot of rhyme or reason going on here, because I know so little about it. But, but anyway, I'm going to try to start small and, you know, just keep moving along. Alright, so I'm back out here tinkering around with the, the Grand B. I've got the cross slide table. It's cleaned up and it's in the process of drying right now. And now I'm going to look at this sort of, I guess that would be the X and then the Y. I think that's right. Um, so, you can see there's a lot of grid in here. And I think these might be, I think I've seen on cams, camshafts and stuff where they have uh, if, so there wouldn't be any slop in there. They'd have two sets of teeth that sort of uh, might be sprung loaded so that there's not any slack or anything. Uh, I don't know if that's the case here or what's going on. But anyway, I know that there's a lot of grit and grime in here. And these ways are just filthy. And, and I can see here this is probably going to be more of an issue than the other table because it hasn't had any... I mean, the, the, the back and forth isn't as traveled of a motion as it is this direction so the wear might not be as bad however it's had all the grit and everything being thrown down into these holes and they're from everything that I can tell they're called oil hole caps and they're supposed to look like this with the little the little cover over it um, but anyway I'm going to disassemble the back of this and I think it's going to slide right out of the front we'll see how that goes So I've got this off of the, this is the, the Y, X, this is the slow back and forth, this is the fast back and forth. Uh, <laughs> it weighs every bit of 45 or 50 pounds, it's pretty heavy. Let me bring you over the machine and show you what it looks like. Alright, so there is the, there is the Grenby sort of disassembled. This, this hulking mass right here is, you know, pretty substantial. But, so, what I've got down here is another set of ways. And then this nut, which is very interesting, it's split down the middle. I don't think that has anything to really do. I, I don't know. But uh, but it's got a wick right here. So there's an oil port, and I'll have to show you later on. But there's an oil port on the side here that you're supposed to squeeze some oil, and then this is supposed to wick up through. And then if the ways are clean, then this thing should, you know, anyway. The wipers are working, it shouldn't have all this chowder in here. And you can see that there's this like rust colored schmoo all over here. So I'm going to wipe this down in the near term, clear all this off, wipe it down and put some sort of corrosion protection on it. Uh, because when I take the grease off I want to make sure that this doesn't sort of get any surface rust on it. But uh... Alright, I absolutely have too much going on in my work. But right now this thing is filthy. I mean I just, every time I touch it, I'll get my hands relatively clean and then you know, a half a second later. So I'm going to put this in the parts washer. I do have the teeth here sort of moving and I've got the handle off uh, I've got the, the the screw out of it the, uh, you can see there's just a lot of chowder on this so all this is going to need a good wire wheel and cleaning up but I'm going to get this in the parts washer work on straightening the bench up a little bit alright so I've, I've had the cross slide or whatever you call it through the the parts washer 
Alright, so I've got the cross slide or whatever you want to call it outside. It's, I'm stripping the paint on it right now, so what I think I want to do is maybe concentrate a little bit on these uh, guide cleaners, the, the, the way scraper or cleaner or whatever they call it. So here's, here's this sort of phenolic like pressed wool material. My thinking is that I could use so I've got some of this wool that I, I, I was using this as a wicking material for my drill press. I actually cut off little bits of this wool and shove it into the oil ports and this helps diffuse the oil slowly over time. But anyway, so that's I think the shape I need. Thickness wise I think I'm I'm a little bit shy of what this should be. Actually, it might be alright. Well, maybe we'll do two, I'm not sure. But anyway, let me get this uh, this section cleaned up a little bit and then we'll get a better look at what we've got going on. Alright, so here we are. We've got the the before and the after with that cleaned up. There, you know, I've probably said this a hundred times so far, uh, but the, the crud that this generator the crud that this grinder generates is, is really incredible. It's it's really hard to get off of there in some cases. And on the inside there wasn't any way I could get off of there other than media blast on it. So what I'm gonna do now is try to try to fit this into here as best I can and then trim it out. So I think that's I think that's the prudent way to go at this point. So Alright so I forgot to hit the record button. I cut out this piece and, and I know it's oversized, and that's sort of intentional. What I want to do is, is have plenty of room to come back later on and fit and trim this thing. But I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a little bit of this, this right stuff, and I'm going to lay a small bead of this Permatex in here to help hold this in place. Alright, so that's... It's in there now, it's only going to take five minutes to dry, but I'm going to set this aside and we'll go ahead and cut this to trim later on. I'm going to do this, I think there's three or four of these, so uh, anyway, I'll do the rest on my own. So there were some really light scratches. I don't know enough about Bondo to say what when I should Bondo versus using the spotting putty. But there were some real light scratches in there. I figure you're looking at this part. Let me go ahead and at least give it a shot. In worst case scenario, I'll just sand it back out. But you can see that it started to dry pretty quickly. You can see the color differentiation there. Anyway, um, all right, let me bring you over to the machine. I think I'm just going to keep disassembling this whole thing. Alright, so as best I could tell, they didn't set this whole machine up and grind these ways in here. They just have four cap head bolts that hold this section in here. There's no reason not to go ahead and take this off and get it cleaned up and um, as best as possible. So let me go ahead and do that. So this is the, these are the ways out of the machine. Now, interestingly, there's this dark, very, very, very dark, just grit. And, and I'm not sure if that's grit from the grinder or from the ways or whatever, but it's sort of, it just turns a cloud of black whenever I put this in the parts washer. So this has just got a quick rinsing in there. I'm gonna go ahead and let it soak for a little while and, uh, and continue to keep moving, working through this project. Alright, so this is sort of a real dilemma here. I've got, you know, the you can see that end of the workbench is just a hot mess. 
I got stuff to clean up, but I I don't want to break away from this job to start cleaning up. But I don't know. It's easy for me to get off track, and I don't I don't know how much of this thing is it worth repainting the casting and pulling the motor off and stuff. I I think what I'm gonna do is probably just yank off this other gib, and that'll be the last part of the working machine that I'm going to clean up, and then, you know, I'm not going to do the, I'm not going to clean the base up, I don't think right now, because I think it's just, I don't know. Let me pull this, this section off, and then we'll see what it looks like from there. All right, so <clears throat> I just spent the last 15 minutes or so trying to figure out how to take this Z off, and I thought I would just simply unscrew from the top. There's a there's a bolt on the top there, if you can see that, and then the, a set screw there in the side, which I still need to tighten back down. But anyway, I got ahead of myself, and, and it wasn't lifting up, and I forgot that I should have removed the bottom plate, because I've done that with every other cross slide that's on this thing. However... Once I got the two screws out of the cross slide here, there's a spring here. So this goes up and down relatively easily. And the reason it does that is because it's got that spring tensioner on there. And I have the foggiest idea <laughs> how this thing, how it works, or, or what, what lets the spring loose, or how you reset it, or do anything. And there's no indication Ooh, what I'm getting into there. Uh, there's a bolt here, but I don't see how that would be affiliated with it. Um, anyway, I just don't know. And at this at this sort of juncture, I'm not the up and down is so infrequently used at this point, I'm not really worried about it. I'm happy to get the bottom cleaned up and get these things so you know I'm not really dragging those back and forth. So what I'm gonna do is be patient. That's not one of my virtues. So so it's painful for me to do this, but I'm going to stop the reconditioning here or the cleaning, I guess you might want to call it. Here I'm gonna I'm gonna go over and look at the spindle and see what I can do to clean it up, and then I'm gonna like stone this surface down and get it cleaned up as best I can while it's in situ here, and uh, and then wait for the paint to dry and come back and reassemble this thing and and actually start using it. And you know I, this machine probably isn't gonna get a lot of use, but I want to get a feel for it. And you know while I'm doing that, I can uh, I can also do some more research and try to figure out more about this machine. Mike, thank you for the, for the, uh, one, of, one of the viewers, Mike, had uh, contacted me and said Obsidian Manufacturing might have some paperwork on this. So I contacted Nick at Obsidian, and he wrote me back immediately and says, well, we do have some Grenby stuff, but we only have the internal and external grinder literature on uh, nothing for this particular model, which is a S1, if you can see that. S1, and then the serial number is 42. Nine or six ninety-five is a serial is forty-two six ninety-five. So anyway, hopefully you can see that. Um, so anyway, I still still haven't found any information on it yet, but I'm going to be patient and not not tear this thing apart and break something. And uh, so anyway, let me get back to this spindle. All right, so I've got the guard off and I've got this off the unit as I, I sort of chickened out on that other part, but you know that's my machine, my prerogative. But, I, I think I might tempt fate a little bit here in the sense that when I was twisting this, trying to listen for the bearings to see how everything sounded, uh, I noticed that there was what looks like a thrust washer or something here, some sort of sprung. Anyway, this, this whole section here is moving and it seems to be I'm not sure exactly how that works, so I'm going to tinker around with it and see what's happening here. Alright, so... 
I'm sort of trying to pace myself and not and not fix this thing to death. Although the it's tempting to want to rip the whole machine apart. I just I know that sometimes I'll get in over my head with things, and and I got pretty uncomfortable when I saw the spring-loaded mechanism over there. So so anyway, I'm just going to clean this up and just get it back together, give it a good wipe down and everything, and get it to the point where I can actually use it. I'm more interested in having the tool to work with than I am it just to sit there and stare at it. So anyway, I'm not worried about it being super beautiful or anything right now. I'm more worried about it being functional. Alright, so I've got the spindle back on. And then I was looking... From what I can tell, this machine is like circa 1940, 1950, something like that. And I was thinking, you know, this thing should have some oil caps on it. And, you know, I found the oil caps, but they're upside down. Uh, you, you can clock these motors. All you gotta do is loosen this and... I want to turn this thing sideways so that I can actually put oil in this motor. Alright, so I have got the bag chuck on the workbench. When I was just sort of wiping it down the other day, it's, it's filthy again just from sitting around. Uh, it, it leaked a bunch of oil out of it. And I see that there's a Zerk fitting here. However, if anybody knows why there's... Why there was oil leaking out, not grease? I, I, I see, I'm sort of perplexed right now, and I spent quite a bit of time on the Practical Machinist forum trying to figure out exactly how to service these things, and, and I haven't found a lot yet. Uh, and I've been so busy, I haven't had enough time to really watch any YouTube, so I'm sort of behind on that front, too. But, uh, but anyway, I'll go ahead and put it out there. If anybody, if this is awkward, or somebody knows anything about, you know, grease versus oil in magnetic chucks, uh, I'd be interested to hear it. And all I know is that I'm reluctant to take this apart because I heard it can be quite dangerous and that, you know, it doesn't take a lot for these things to get messed up easily. And it works just fine, so I don't want to don't wanna go fixing it to death, so to speak. Alright. Alright, I apologize for the background noise. The neighbor's having some pavers put in and them guys are working their tails off out there, so... No. Anyway, the... The internet is down here, so I figured I'd come out here and, you know, I, it looks like I'm going to be without the internet for probably the better part of a couple days, so no point in rushing this video. <coughs> I was able to take what I thought was a, this collar here is a tapered collar, so it's sort of like a, like almost a Morris taper. I think it's actually probably closer to a Jacobs. Um, but anyway, this, I, I, anyway, the reason I'm disassembling it is because the flat pulley, I've tried and tried and tried, and there just doesn't seem to be any any reasonable way to get the pulley to stay on here. It just seems like a bad design. And I have a bunch of small V-belt pulleys, and I'm trying to see if I can't get in here to, to retrofit this. I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but, you know, I'm going to give it a shot. So, All right, so we're back in the shop today. I finally got the parts I've been waiting on, and this is going to be... The, the you can see over here I have the this is the grinding the the head for the grinding uh, surface grinder and the wheel that was on here was flat but I want to convert it over to a V belt because it kept tossing the belt and I tried and tried and tried and tried and I just couldn't figure out a way to get it to to keep tracking without you know making some serious modifications to it so I went through my pulley pile and I have a pulley that, uh, that is the right size that I want to put on here. However, the arbor is the wrong size. The arbor is a one inch arbor and this is seven eighths. So what I've done is gone and bought the one inch to seven eighths inch arbor adapter. And just so you know, some of these things, they're pretty close, but they don't always fit. Um, you can see that it fits on partly here but I can't spin it around and fit it on there. So, so some of these cheaper bushings aren't, you know, they're not really spot on. So I had to file fit one, you know, when I say file fit, I mean I had to get in there and sand this thing out and take out, you know, maybe a tenth or two or whatever um, to get it to fit. And then that one that I have that, that I know fits on here perfectly is in the freezer and I'm trying to contract it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up a little bit, not, not crazy hot just enough to expand the metal so between the contraction of the, the the getting this cold and then the warmness of this hopefully I can just slide the two together and and that'll be that so anyway let's see if I can't do that and get a little get it on film
Hey, there we are. That's the, the new bushing in the end here. I'm gonna go over and put this back on the grinder. I've got a, I just made a, a Delrin spacer here to make up for, the, this is so, actually like an interference or a slip fit. And then the tightness on this nut controls this sort of, this is sort of like a clutch if you will. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna carry this over, get it mounted, and then start working on aligning the pulley, get the pulley welded together. Alright, so this is going to be sort of tricky, but hopefully you can see the end here. What I'm, what I'm trying to do is I've got this piece of rod that's arguably straight on both pulleys. The drive, the motor back there, and then a the driven pulley here for the grinder end. Now if you watch the end of this, I'm going to hold it down and keep pressure on it. You see how it's starting to spin? That, it's got, it's sort of hard to do this. But if you hold the pulley, God, it's, it's really hard to get the shot here. It only turns ever so slightly. I don't know if you can see that. But if you get a straight rod between two pulleys, and if they're not aligned, you're going to see them start to twist. And and I'm trying to keep pressure on it and let it let it go. But anyway, uh, there's there's a million different ways to try to get pulleys lined up, but this is the the surest way that I know how to do it, and uh, or at least get you into the ballpark. And uh, you can see that. If you really pay attention, you can see that sort of uh, counterclockwise twisting. But anyway, let me go ahead and get the pulleys lined up as best I can, and then uh, work on getting this belt sized. All right, so this is a V belt made by I think it's Fenner Fenner Drives. Um, it's super tough stuff. Let's see, I never. Ah. Anyway, it's very tough stuff. So you've really got to have some good cutters. Ideally what I need to do is heat these two sections up and then melt them together. So I am going to... This is going to be really complicated. I don't know if I'll be able to film this. But all, what I'm going to end up doing is trying to heat this side, heat this side, and then hold them together close enough to make sure that they, uh, that they stay together as closely as possible. So this is that drive belt. I've cleaned up the joints a little bit. It's, I can see it's a little cattywampus. You see, see there's a little arc there. But I think for the distance, and of course I got my greasy hands all over it that make it look, look bad now. But uh, you know, for my first time really splicing it, I think, I think it looks okay, but looks don't really matter as much as it does the strength, so. I think you're supposed to let this stuff cure for like a half hour after you heat it up, but anyway, so I'll, I'll give it 10 minutes or so and put it on the machine. Because I can't help but think that, you know, once it's cooled down to room temperature, it's going to be, you know, as strong as it should be, right? Um, anyway, I don't know anything about this stuff. All I know is that if this, if this works, this is going to be big trouble for Gates and all the other belt manufacturers out there because... I hate having to try to size belts off of machines that are, you know, I go into the auto parts store and, and the kids don't know how to measure a belt anymore and I've got to go back there and then the belt measuring tool they have is invariably broken because somebody dropped it and it's just, just a nightmare trying to buy belts. So if I can just buy a roll of this stuff, because it's $2 a foot or $2.50 a foot, I'll just buy, you know, 50 feet of this stuff and and be done with it. So it, this is low power stuff, so I wouldn't want to use this on, you know, probably a lawnmower deck or something like that. But who knows? I, I really don't know. But we'll see how it works out, and and I, we'll see how my, I think the weakest part is, you know, my labor is, the, the, the human element is always the weak part. So uh, we'll put this on and see how my weld holds. So there it is. There's the new orange belt. I think that looks friggin' awesome. I wish I could pull the machine out more without it falling off the bench. Anyway, alright, so there's the belt. Let me... See, the motor climbs a little bit, but it doesn't gallop at all like it used to. 
it used to shake so much when I got this thing. And and I told the guy, I said, you know, this thing's, you know, not worth crap because it shakes so much. And just trying to sort of beat him down on the price. And, uh, you know, he didn't budge and uh, I ended up giving in. But, you know, anyway, I was able to work my way through and, you know, solve it. So this thing, really, you know, there's not a, any vibration or anything at all. That That's perfect. So I've got the surface grinder more or less back together. I still got to put all the adjusting things in for the Gibbs and adjust everything and, and do some final, put the end caps on.